Welcome back to SciTech Intermountain Earthworks training videos. Today we're going to actually use a laser catcher. We are going to set up a rotating laser that is a dual slope laser and we're going to use our 320E that is an older machine so it's not a next gen. It's wired up for Earthworks. I'm going to do a, a training video on level planes, how to transfer the elevations, how to set bench elevations, and how to uh, dig a flat plane in this video. In the next video, I will dig uh, a sloping. We'll set our laser at a slope, set a slope in the machine. So right off the bat, you do not have to use a very specific tripod. I brought out one that's an elevating tripod that will actually allow me to raise the laser way up in the air. You can use the traditional one that's a little bit lower, no big deal. The one thing you need to know with the laser is when you turn it on, if depending on what laser you have, the machine itself has to have the laser on the faster rotate. What I mean by that is where the, the um, actual laser centerpiece up there is spinning. Right now it's auto leveling. You have to have it on the higher RPM. There's a lot of lasers that have a slower RPM and a higher one. Make sure it's on the higher one. But right now we're just going to leave this laser perfectly level. Once it levels out, we'll get it spinning. Now that it's spinning, this one automatically I had come on at a higher rev rate. With your laser catcher on your excavator, on the left side of the stick right here, it obviously has to be able to see it. One thing to note is if you can get the laser a little bit higher, it's better um, for accuracy. Because what happens is when you lay, lay the stick down on an angle this way or lay it out straight to catch the beam to get the strike, it will still catch it if this isn't perfectly straight up and down. You can have it on an angle, but with all these little diodes in there, for accuracy, it is better if you can get the laser a little higher. So if you don't have one of those elevating tripods, no big deal, just get your laser up a little higher. If it is down on the ground, not a deal breaker. But once again, on your laser striker here, you gotta be able to see it and strike and try to keep it not perfectly straight out or perfectly flat down. So we're gonna go ahead and set out a bench. I've got an elevation here that I'm calling my 100. I know it's just a painted rock. If you have a back of curb or something out on the job site, something solid bench off, make sure you stay with that. Now that you're in the machine, whatever machine you're in, if it's a cat, go ahead and log into cat grade. If it's earthworks, log into earthworks. Your machine may be set in 3D mode from any previous work you've done. On your main dashboard here, what you've got to do is go ahead, if it's not a next-gen excavator, meaning it's been wired up from us, we're going to go ahead and go in here and where you've got the positioning source. If you were on dual GNNS or UTS, any of that stuff, it may give you a warning when you first start up, no problem. Go ahead and come in here and set it to 2D, and you'll see that it says laser catcher enabled. So we are good to go with the laser catcher. I've got the bucket that is on this machine, which is the only one wired up for it. We'll go ahead and hit apply. So we're actually in 2D. You can give these all these boxes just a second. If you're switching from GPS to 2D, the system status may be red for just a minute. Um, go ahead and set up your job setup. It doesn't matter if you're on a project that you're already on, but obviously the mode needs to be depth and slope. And uh, measured data, wouldn't worry too much about that. Go ahead and hit apply. Go ahead and hit start. So right off the bat, what we're going to do is set up on our rock or our benchmark, whatever you've got as a benchmark. You can use your corner tip, the center, whatever you've got. Make sure you uh, make sure your red carrot is where you want to bench, though. And right off the bat, you've got different icons on the bottom of the screen here. You've got an elevation or uh, one that looks like a bench, and then one that looks like uh, kind of a Board, uh, bullet on there. So if you touch and hold and go into these, you'll see that there's options in here to clear bench when you, um, or clear the offset, excuse me, and you also have reference elevation. What that means is if I have reference elevation off, you can just go ahead and zero out at any point. We can just bench. So you can see we're zero on the middle of the bucket, no elevation at the top of the screen. You can always do it this way, but if you actually want to assign that elevation that you're benching off, say, hey, that's my 100, you can go back into that icon and turn on reference elevation, and then you can type in a number. You can see there's already a 100 in here. You could put that a zero, 
You could put it at 150, whatever it is. I'm going to call this rock my 100, and I'm going to bench. The other thing that you may need to set in your machine if you haven't done yet is what's called an auto laser strike. So in the shovel with the gear, if you go down this menu, there's touch point and then bench elevation and then laser. Some of these icons show up based on what mode you're in. So in the laser there, you can see that there's an auto accept. If I have auto accept off, let me show you what it looks like with that off. So now that I've benched out and I've zeroed, what I want to do is pass my laser through the actual striker on the side of the stick. So you can hear that beep. That means I went too far. I went past it. So I'm going to just come back up. So there you can see that it doesn't auto accept, but there is a blue icon that shows up at the bottom there that went away because I didn't hit it fast enough. So we're going to come back down and come back up into that laser strike. If it's what I want, I can automatically laser strike accept that. Some people like that off so that as they're passing through the laser constantly, as they're digging, it's not auto, auto doing it, auto doing it. So that's why you may want to set it to where you do it. But if not, and you want it to do that, let's go ahead and just turn that on just to show you. I'm going to go back into laser, turn on auto accept, and hit done. And then as I pass back through that laser again, you'll still get the same beep. The beep's warning me I'm getting close. You can see how I went up and it's not there. As soon as we get there, laser strike accepted. So that's one way you can do it also. So now that we're there, once again, you'll see that if I reach back out, the machine, because I haven't moved the tracks, still knows where zero is, and that's good. But as soon as I move the undercarriage, there's no reference. That's what GPS does. It uses a reference to understand elevation on the earth. Right now, everything is just two-dimensional to the bucket, stick, boom, and body sensor. So what I can do now is come over here, and I can start digging. Let's say I establish a grade over here that I want to actually follow. That's my new elevation. It's not 100, but I've established it. What I'm going to do is set my teeth on it. You can see it's a fill of six inches, no big deal. I'm going to re-level out again. I'm going to re-bench. That's my new bench. Now that I've benched again, I want to make sure that I reference the laser again. Is good practice. So laser's accepted. We're good to go. Now I'm going to climb up on the hill there, and I'm going to show you what it looks like if I climb up on the hill and try to reference that elevation before I have re-benched. So now that I've gotten up on the hill, I haven't caught my laser striker yet, or laser beam yet. If I reach down to that exact same spot that I was just down there and touch down where I know I zeroed out, you can see I've got a fill of 440 here. I don't need a fill of 440. I want to re-bench or re-reference the elevation off of the laser. So what I got to do is just turn the stick to where it can actually see the laser or get a strike off of it and then just lower it down until I get an auto laser strike. So see how I got auto laser strike? Now let's go back and reference that exact same spot that I had benched out on the bottom down there, knowing that my excavator is way up on the hill. So as soon as I set down on it, boom, zeros. Fill of 500s, it may just be where I'm setting. If your bucket's not measured up, that may be something also. I set back down on it, right there, exact same spot. Bucket at a little bit of a different angle, zeros, right? So that's how the laser striker and laser catcher works is to re-reference the machine when the housing of the body or the tracks have changed in elevation. You got to be careful on your, if you're digging in mud or if you take a big scoop and your tracks sink or you're in soft material, whatever it is, that's why you're always going to want to keep re-referencing the, uh, the laser. So now that I'm up here, let me show you one more thing before we go back down. I'm going to dig down just a little bit deeper. Just to give you a reference as to me, me setting an elevation from the top and going down below and re-referencing it. So if I do that, I got a fill of 20. So what I'm going to do is zero out on that. I'm going to re-zero re out. So I've zero, zero, zero on that. 
I'm going to change this bottom ribbon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take out the uh, the center. I don't need the center on there. I just want cut fill left and right. So there we go. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and re-reference the laser just to make sure. Laser strike accepted. So let's climb off the hill and go reference that one more time. Okay, so now that I've climbed off the hill, I'm going to set back down on that exact same spot that I was checking from the top. The center of my bucket right there is where I had benched from the top. I've got a cut of 450, not even close. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to stick out this time because last time I came straight in, went a little bit past the laser. You could hear that beep. As soon as I get into it, laser strike accepted. Now I'm going to set back down on that exact same spot that I had benched from the top. And you can see I'm within a tenth there. Could be the bucket angle. And we're going to set down within five hundredths. So that's how you re reference and re snap with the laser and the laser striker. So thank you for watching this video from Sight Tickener Mountain on the basics of laser catcher on an excavator and laser strikes.